Dan Perry here, and we're back with our TCP IP Basics, Part 24. The, still looking at the OSI model and the TCP IP headers. This is a continuation of the previous uh, video. Uh, and we're going to continue examining the TCP IP header. Uh, we'll talk about some of the important parts of that header. Now, here is a... Uh, diagram of the TCP IP header. Uh, we've talked about some of the uh, things already, the source and destination ports. We've talked about that the port numbers are what are used to assign the uh, packet to a particular ap application within your, the computer. Uh, and now we're going to go on and talk about the sequence number. The sequence and acknowledgement numbers are there to keep the segments in order, make sure the da data is delivered. When we've got a large chunk of data, there we can't efficiently uh, transmit it as a single piece. It has to be broken down into smaller segments, and then those segments need to be transmitted. If we tried to transmit an entire 5 megabyte file, or today we it's, it's not unusual for us to transmit 2 gigabyte files, um, if we try to transmit those all at once, um, that would con uh, clog up the network. If there were errors during the transmission, we had to restart the transmission. That would make a lot more traffic. So by breaking that large chunk of data into these segments and transmitting them, now we've got a manageable amount of data. And if only one segment's received in an error or lost, that's all that needs to be retransmitted. So we use sequencing and acknowledgments to detect these problems. Each segment is assigned a sequence number with TCP. When it's received, the TCP protocol looks at look the sequence numbers and can be sure that they're all received. Now, they may not even be received in the same order they're sent because there can be multiple paths from source to destination. Um, so it can also, with the sequence number, place them in the right order. If a segment is not received, then no acknowledgement is sent that it's received. So the sender, if it doesn't receive the acknowledgement, assumes the segment's lost and then will resend it. So here's a built-in me mechanism for ensuring that the data is received. The acknowledgement is used to, again, acknowledge that you received the, received the data. A segment or group of segments are received. You don't have to not acknowledge every single segment. And when, we, in, when we talk about the window size, that's how we determine how much you can send prior to an acknowledgement. Uh, the acknowledgement, if an, an acknowledgement is not received, the sender will just retransmit the data. Um, now, they won't keep trying to retransmit it forever and ever. After a few tries, then they will assume that the destination system is no longer available, and they'll error out. Uh, again, acknowledgments do not have to be sent for every segment, and we use the window size that we'll talk about later to determine how frequently those acknowledgments are sent. Next time, we're going to continue on looking at these TCP IP headers. As always, we're keeping these videos short so that uh, you, can, you can digest them in very small chunks and you don't have to devote hours of your time to very long videos.